Hello everyone, this is Chet from Chet Chat. This is the monthly movie podcast, and I guess in a sense, Happy New Year. We're t- going to talk about January 2024. We saw a few movies here. It's uh, I'm seeing six movies, so not that many. I actually did miss a couple movies, like, uh, what was it called? The Origins, and I feel like there was something else that was a very limited release, but I did not get to watch it. Uh, I believe it's like the place where we left or something like that. But yeah, you know, we, we try to watch as much as we could. And I feel like, you know, seven for four weeks of a month, that's it. That's not too shabby. All right. So um, we saw Night Swim, The Book of Clarence, Beekeeper, ISS, Founders Day, and Miller's Girl. Overall, it's actually not a bad month in my opinion. Oh, I also saw Zone of Interest. I forgot about that. I didn't put that down here. Zone of Interest. Yeah, so with Zone of Interest, I feel like this was actually not a bad month. Um, Usually January is trash. Usually they just open up the garbage dump and just dump it all over January for movies. But uh, surprisingly, this month, not too bad. Um, This is going to like have a bunch of spoilers and stuff. So I'm just going to give like a general rundown of each movie for now so you could decide whether or not you want to listen to the rest of this and at least get an idea of what you're going into so for night swim it's a pretty bad horror movie that's like the usual that we expect for january horror and terrible usually go hand in hand uh for some reason horror movies tend to miss a lot i feel like it's very rare that a horror movie does well and this is uh, not the exception unfortunately uh, I like the idea of how the trailer looked. It looked almost like, uh, what was it, um, Eldridge kind of being, like cosmic horror kind of thing, but it's not even nearly that deep. So I wouldn't recommend Night Swim. Book of Clarence, I recommend for sure. It's very odd. Um, it's like a re- retelling of the story of Jesus in a sense and like how that uh, whole thing went down. We'll get into it a little bit more, but I don't want to say too much, but I definitely recommend it. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's it's strange because it feels like there's supposed to be a punchline, but there isn't really a punchline. It's very matter of fact. But uh, yeah, I'll definitely recommend that. Beekeeper, I definitely recommend. God, it was so much fun watching this movie. It reminded me a lot of like uh, John Wick, you know, like somebody who has like a vendetta or something. And, uh, but you know, with that, uh, Jason Statham twist where he always plays a character who's very particular about specific things with specific rules. So it's like if John Wick was Jason Statham instead and yeah, it was very fun. Um, very well choreographed, good action. So I recommend that ISS. Mm, It's not bad. It's fine. I mean, like if you have nothing else to do. And you just really want to go to the movies or you just want to sit down and watch something or, you know, have something on in the background. I'll say ISS is a good watch. (laughs) That's not really a glowing uh, review. But, like, I'm also kind of, like, biased because I like that kind of space stuff. And um, I'll get a little more into why I kind of like it, obviously. But uh, I would would, would recommend it. It's not too bad. Not too bad. Founder's Day is god-awful. Probably the worst movie of the month, I think feel like um i also felt kind of tricked because i did not watch the trailer for founders day and you know when you see the poster for founders day and you hear the word founders day i guess it's like my fault for assuming the way how they marketed it it felt like it was tied into the uh, purge universe because you know purge is like all about american values and the, the the right to you know have this thing called the purge where you can do whatever you want for this, uh, like, what, 12-hour window. And the way how the Founders Day looked, it looked like, you know, it was setting up how the that whole thing came to be. Like, even though we did get the first Purge movie, but there's still, you know, still some building blocks that you could do. But, you know, it's not... It's the way how they marketed it felt a little scummy, I guess, because just from the poster and the title, they didn't have to call it Founders Day. But, uh, yeah, it was terrible. Not even if I like if I didn't know about the purge, it's still just a bad movie in general. <clears throat> uh, Miller's Girl, man, 
uh, I don't know how I feel about this. It's very icky. <laughs> like, I haven't seen a movie like this in a long time. Um, I'm sure there are, like, some things out. Like, like um, what was it? I think it's called Hard Candy. And uh, there was a movie a long time ago. I forget what it was called. Where um, it was like a, I think it was like, what's the name? Felicia Silverstone? I, I think it's Felicia Silverstone. And um, the, he, she was like crushing on, I think it was just called Crush, actually. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's another one of those kind of movies where it's like, you know, it's an inappropriate relationship. And some stuff goes down. Uh, it's it's fine, it, but like it, it's a it's a it's a controversial subject. Some people might not want to watch that. I guess it's like a trigger warning in a sense. It's, you may not want to hear about that or see it. Um, but it's it's odd. I I liked it, but um, it's just strange. Um, Zone of Interest. That was that was also very weird. Uh, Zone of Interest is for a specific movie viewer i would say if you're just going to the movies to like you know have fun enjoy um even like if if you're looking for something more than that i feel like this is still uh, an acquired taste kind of movie where it's it, it does not spoon feed you things but if you're not willing to be very alert <laughs> for the whole movie th- you might not like this uh, for zone of interest Mm, I I would recommend it though, you know. See if you try it and like it, you know. So yeah, those are the seven. Uh, take it or leave it, and I'm gonna get into the nitty gritty of it now. Um, and just a quick thing. Uh, if I sound a little strange or like like congested a little bit, I'm still kind of getting over a little cold drinking a lot of water but i think i'm okay enough to do this podcast a little bit <clears throat> so night swim night swim oh man so the story about night swim is like this uh baseball player he he got like a, a disease that required him to pretty much quit being base like being a major league baseball player and uh, he's like settling down with his family and they come across this house there's a pool, and apparently the pool is like a wishing well, but at the same time it's a monkey's paw, and it it, it kind of like you don't have to say what you want; it just like susses out what you want, and it takes one of your family members to grant your wish. So the dad of the family, the baseball player, he has to like he wants to play baseball again, obviously, because he, he that's all he's like focused on. But he has a, a daughter and a son. The daughter is like a really good swimmer, the uh, night swim. Hur, hur. But um, the son is like, <laughs> you feel kind of bad for him. It's like he's like no, not good at anything. So the pool decides like, hey, I'm just gonna kill the the kid, the son, and you could you know play baseball. And like every, every time the guy swims in the pool, like he's like he's starting to feel better. But uh, you know weird stuff happens in the house, and it just boring overall that's the thing it's, it's a boring movie and it's also not scary that's the unfortunate part uh I, I believe it's a blumhouse production so you know they're just cranking out cheap movies that will get money just because um a lot of people go watch it but uh you know it's relatively cheap to make so they're still gonna make money regardless and uh, I'm pretty sure they probably did make the money. I don't want to look it up, but, you know, it's unfortunate. I felt like the marketing was really good, too, to actually pull people in to actually watch the movie. Because, you know, there's a there's just, like, an innate fear of, like, water and deep water. I have that fear. <laughs> um, like, that's why I, like, never go on a cruise. Just being out in the ocean is, like, a nightmare to me. But, uh... So, like, you go to watch those movies just to, you know, see what's going to happen with the the actual fair. And they don't really go too much into it. They don't make it interesting. Because it's a pool. So it's, it's a standing body of water. Like, to avoid the issues of it, you just don't have to go in the pool. 
yeah, there's a part where, like, you know, the pool kind of just draws people into it. But, I mean, like, have some sense. <laughs> Pools don't act like this normally. <laughs> so, uh, you got to suspend some disbelief to feed into this fear of, that they're trying to make you fair in a sense. I don't know if I would do anything differently. It's just... Uh, I guess, like, my original thought was, like, you know, the cosmic horror aspect where it's, like, there's, like, there's this one frame in the trailer that shows the girl going to the pool, the daughter, and um, she, she can't even see the floor of the pool anymore. It's just, like, this empty void. So it's, I felt like there's, like, some kind of greater being that, like, has something to do and, like, kind of mess with the family. Kind of like, a, I think it's, like, a color out of space. Where it's just like this being, it's not even like a being, it's like a thing that just kind of like messes with the environment in a sense. Like like Annihilation. I keep dropping all these movie references, but like there's a lot of like, you know, uh, examples of what I'm thinking of that I felt like this movie could have also benefited from doing. Because in a sense, like the pool is just something to defeat and they actually, you know, well, they kind of defeat it. It's not the best way of defeating something but uh and then they see like another family that had the same issue it's like you know th there's always like a previous witness to the horror and somehow they gotta try and get over it i felt like um yeah again like other movies just do it better i, I think there's a there was a korean movie called the wailing which is come something similar where like you see a family undergo some kind of horrific kind of thing and then you see the symptoms of that happening to the main character's family and just try to find out how they're supposed to overcome what inevitably happens like it seems like it's an inevitable thing but they you know try and have a way to cure it i definitely recommend the wailing that, that movie is just a bad time but it's like amazing <laughs> it's so tragic uh, and it's very long if you don't like the long movies. But anyway, yeah, that's how I feel about Night Swim, unfortunately. Uh, I felt like I guess I had like a little more higher expectations, even though I shouldn't have. But it, it you know, leaves you feeling nothing. Excuse me. All right. The Book of Clarence. Uh, <laughs> the boy Lakeith Steinfeld is in this. Uh, I feel like most of the movies that I see him in are really good. Other than, uh, what is it, The Haunted Mansion? I don't know how he ended up in that, but Money Talks. Uh, the Book of Clarence, it's a strange movie because it's like, yeah, like I said before, it's very straightforward. And um, there's like, it's funny, but there's like, it's not really supposed to be a comedy, I feel like. I feel like there's more to be understood about the movie where like, like I almost feel like I don't fully understand the purpose of the movie, but it's still a good movie. <laughs> it's just me. So pretty much this, uh, the main character, Clarence, he's like struggling in the, the olden times, the, the Jesus times. Jesus is a full grown man in this movie. So like, you know, he's been out and about, it's like, like a couple of months before he's um quote unquote uh crucified. <laughs> so um he Clarence, he's just like, you know, trying to make make something of himself. But like he's like, you know, selling drugs, he's doing like shady stuff, but he's just trying to be a better person. And he actually has a twin brother that is actually one of the apostles with uh Jesus's clique. And, uh, yeah, Jesus is black. All the apostles are black. Like, the more, all the important figures are black. Um, and pretty much Clarence is just trying to figure out how he can become an apostle as well to become a well, like, you know, established, esteemed person. But the things that he has to do to try and impress the apostles ends up making him a greater person in general. And it's almost like he kind of becomes like a Jesus-like figure himself 
which is inevitably not, you know, the best thing to be. And there's like a surprise appearance from a really, really popular actor. I don't want to say who it is. It's just interesting that they just do that. But I guess it's kind of like to show like what happens when the aesthetic is more pleasing to believe into than what is actually really happening. Uh, that's just my thought process of watching this movie. Um, <laughs> I definitely recommend watching it just so you could see what I'm talking about. <laughs> And just like with the basic, you know, movie premises and uh, building blocks of a movie, it's just a nice movie to watch. Uh, everybody's like acting their ass off and not leaving anything on the table. And it's just the diversity of the characters that show up. Yeah, it's mostly just like, you know, white and black people. But like just like the range of actors that they bring in. It's not just all black, all right all power, all stars. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they, they have many other good actors. Uh, what else can I say about this movie? Well, yeah, just the ending is strange. Um, They kind of just like, like they, they say something bad is going to happen and then like you're just figure, trying to figure out how it's not going to happen to this character. And then it just happens anyway. And then something else happens and you're like, so what's the point of this movie? <laughs> what's the lesson? What, what am I supposed to learn from this? Like why make a movie like this? Um, not just to spite Christianity and how funny it looks when you say it out loud. Um, Huh. I guess in a sense, it's like uh, you don't need to be like an actual magical figure to do something great. And uh, people will only record the fantastical to, you know, I guess push a narrative in a sense. All right. This is, this is, this is a little too much. <laughs> it's just a movie. But yeah, at the end of the day, even though I'm like thinking about it now, like I, it's, it, I didn't like, you know, feel deeply affected by the movie. Of course, like, you know, it always like reminds you to like be kind and stuff, but, and you know, just don't just uh, settle for uh, mediocrity. But, you know, that's like everyday life. You don't, you don't need a movie to tell you that, like, you know what you want to do and you know what you got to do. <laughs> And you know how to do it. It's just if you want to do it, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> Goddamn water bottle. So the next movie in line is Beekeeper. Um, hmm. I think Beekeeper is the MVP of January. Easily. Very solid action movie. A lot of fun. The characters are fun. Um, the action set pieces are great. The story is nice and simple enough. Uh, like I said before, it, it reminded me of John Wick, where um, Jason Statham character, the beekeeper, he was uh, wronged by because somebody... Uh, took advantage of somebody that he cared of, and that person ended up unaliving themselves because they thought that they lost something. And the beekeeper ends up going down the line of people that could possibly be responsible for it. And I guess it also reminds me of uh, the Equalizer, because the beekeeper is like this like government ex government agent. That, you know, could just be activated and he knows exactly how to whoop everybody's ass. Like, he does not get touched for, like, the whole movie until, like, oh, all the way in the end. And, which I kind of like because, like, you know, it's, it's awesome. Like, he's supposed to be the ba ultimate badass. 
um, <clears throat> so yeah, like you just following this character go crazy and let's like uh work up the chain of like you know starts on a low level and beats up thugs and finds out who's responsible for them and who's the supervisor for them and it goes all the way up man it goes all the way up the only thing i didn't really enjoy too much of the movie is um the the character that uh unalive themselves they had a daughter and that daughter is a like a fbi agent so the movie's kind of more from her perspective in a sense because jason statham's character doesn't really say anything uh he just acts and he, he like just asks questions and he tells people you know to like don't don't take advantage of you know the weak and feeble people like he's like you know spouting off like you know wisdom <laughs> but i guess like to actually have like a character that has dialogue and trying to break down the movie they have this uh, fbi character and i feel like they just tried to like give her a character so she that's all she is and it's kind of it doesn't come off interesting it just comes off annoying and then she also has like a partner who is just like nonchalant all the time and like he doesn't want to do anything it just it's like this really poorly written buddy cop movie in the middle of this really really good action movie <clears throat> so like you would just see Jason Statham character do something badass and he had to like you know slog through this like you know two to three minutes of this, these characters like just breaking down the badassery that just happened and then we get back to some good action so I feel like the good outweighs the cons there and it works out for the movie overall <clears throat> And I was just looking into it. Um, the director for Beekeeper. Uh, I'm surprised that of the uh, pedigree that they had. They did do a lot of good movies like uh, uh, Fury. Well, he was a producer for Fury. And uh, he did some Birds of Prey stuff. Mostly producing, though. But he, he doesn't have too many director directorial debuts so he did a really good job with this one for like a, I guess like a first time full on movie and they dropped him in January he's like alright we'll, we'll test your waters with this um I can I can see like a beekeeper too come out I hope I kind of hope for it <laughs> um you know or they could even add, add like yeah it's like it's really interesting man they have like this whole world of beekeeper stuff it's, it's very john wick like with like a little equalizer so i i would watch a beekeeper too if it came out man that's, that's good all right iss so <laughs> iss i liked it a little, like it's not amazing but you know, it's it's just cool, fun space stuff. But there's like a a few odd choices in it that I didn't really like. <laughs> but it's also um it's kinda like like what Hollywood likes to do, where they look at the current state of the world and uh, make movies that kind of reflect how it looks. Like um like back in the day when they had like Fruitvale Station and I forget this movie with uh, John Boyega where he's like in his hotel, you know, because like the black rights, the black rights, black lives matter movement um, and, uh, you know, the police brutality situation that, you know, they, they kept making movies like about that, you know, the white people are evil movies. So right now it feels like they're making movies where the world is like at the brink of war. So ISS is a movie about, you know, Russia and the U S having war. And it kind of reminds me that like, uh, later this year, we're getting a movie called civil war where America, United States itself is having another civil war. It's kind of like playing off of what's going on right now. Um, 
I guess they're tasteful enough to not have a Ukrainian movie. Uh, we'll see if that holds true for now. But I think it's just because the ISS, they just only had uh, Americans and Russians in that area at one point. So, well, that's where the, the movie portrays, at least. They have, like, an American team, there's a Russian team. And, you know, they're working together, and they're, like, scientists. They're having fun. They're, like, we're elevated beings, man. We're scientists. We don't have no um, boundaries. We don't talk politics. They, make, they actually have a line in the movie where they're saying that we try to leave politics on Earth because that doesn't matter up here. But then when Earth and Russia start having some kind of a dispute on Earth, and it's a big dispute because they can see it from space where it is like fire rings, like just on the planet's surface. It's like they're getting bombed to hell. And then uh, their respective countries contact the each side, like the Russian, uh, spa- the Russian astronauts get contacted by their leaders and the American astronauts get contacted by their leaders. And they tell them that they have to take over the ISS. Which I'm like, it's not really that serious. I don't think, is it, is it that important that they have to take it over? Like, from what they said in the movies, like, the ISS is just like a, like a lab in space, pretty much. It's not like it controls any satellites, any other satellites in orbit. And I, I wouldn't think, like you would be able to run the ISS into anything because you would just blow up that station. Things are extremely fragile in space. So <laughs> obviously that's like a plot hole, I guess. I don't see any like real military advantage of taking over the space station. But I guess, you know, like they're just trying to, because they're both up there, they got to make one or the other in a sense. And then it just starts like this, like a, uh, kind of the thing kind of like atmosphere where they don't trust anybody up in space even on like their own teams like people are like lying and stuff uh and like characters who you think are like obviously gonna be a problem are are not the problem (laughs) and (laughs) they do this one character mad dirty because they they obviously they tricked this dude into go in, going outside of the satellite to repair something, and it's obviously not broken. And then they toss this dude into space, only for him to actually come back later in the movie, and like he survived a spacewalk, and then he dies anyway because somebody stabs him or something. I'm like, dude, don't you if you want to do that, don't make it the same character. Like Jesus, <laughs> this dude is going through it. You're gonna make him survive a spacewalk and then get stabbed and just it's it's, it's a bit much there's so many other characters you could just separate the trauma you know and then like you know they have a clear protagonist in the movie so you 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 pretty sure you you're not really worried about that character because they're the protagonist obviously they're going to survive uh, I know it's not obvious, but, like, the way how people are, like, you know, getting picked off is, like, uh, you're not going to kill this character, right? Unless they pulled, like, a Life movie. <laughs> the one with the parasite in space. I don't even know if it's a parasite. It's more like a... Like a... It's just a straight-up alien. Well, that's another movie. <laughs> I actually did a review on that on this channel. But, uh, uh, if you're interested, you could go watch that. <laughs> But I guess uh, yeah, I'll recommend it. It's a little neat movie. Um, fantastical, in a sense. All right, now, next up is uh, Founder's Day. Founder's Day. My God. I was so bored out of my mind watching this movie. I hated it. <laughs> it's like a... It felt very similar to the Thanksgiving movie that came out. Uh, where, like... This like little town is celebrating this specific holiday, and during that specific holiday, um, all hell breaks loose. But Founders Day is garbage. <laughs> like I, I barely even remember what happened in that movie because I was so uninterested. But just 
it felt like it didn't make sense. Like there was like some kind of like political kind of not not like real life political. I mean like the reason why things were happening is because uh, these people wanted to be a mayor or something. And oh yeah, it's super convoluted. Ah oh, man, it's so awful, bro. And again, like I guess like because of the, how the marketing looked, it made it very purge like. But they didn't have to call it Founders Day. They could have just been like Election Day or something. That yeah, that might have been better. Cause I I even yeah, the Founders Day was just like a arbitrary holiday that they had that they ended up just like canceling when that day happened in the movie. So it, it didn't even matter. It, they, they, I feel like they, they, they were definitely tricking people into watching this movie. <laughs> but basically, there's a uh, there's this fa- there's like three families. Um, one of them is currently the mayor of the town. The other one is running for mayor, and the other one, um, their child is dating one of the children of the uh, competing families, and somebody starts picking off the kids from like all three of the families or like, well, they try to at least. And then you find out that it was the family's kids themselves doing the killing. And the ringleader was like this well-known teacher who was just trying to do the best thing for the town. And he, <laughs> And like he like you wouldn't expect it at all because it's just a dumb premise. And then he just is he gets away with it. And that's it. That's the movie. So like but they also make like the the people who die look like assholes in a sense. Well, at least the 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 head of the households of the families. So they're kinda like, you know, salt in the earth of that family. <laughs> just to make sure none of them rise up again, I guess it it really didn't make, it really didn't need to do all that. They could have just, if, if that was the guy's plan, why didn't he just kill the parents? Why he had to kill the children? I don't get it. It don't make any sense. And then like that, his character just writing stuff on the walls. And I really didn't understand. Like you have to, you have to really suspend your disbelief. Like it's just like, the amount of stupidity from the killers and it, it is no good, man. <laughs> yeah. So that's like, I think, yeah. Founders Day is probably the worst movie this month. Don't watch. Delete. Not even for, for like for fun. Like it's not, so bad is good kind of stuff, you know. All right, on to Miller's Girl. Miller's Girl. If you like that, uh, Jenna Ortega, you'll enjoy this. You'll enjoy this more than anybody else, probably. <laughs> I actually went into watching it because um, I saw a quick poster of it, but it was only uh, a poster of Martin Freeman. So... That's why I wanted to watch it. I, I like him. He's a, he's a good actor. He does like so many different roles. Um, and and when I actually sat down in a the theater and started watching it, it opens, I believe, with uh, Jenna Ortega's character. I was like, what? Oh, snap. Jenna Ortega? Okay. I don't know where. Uh, like, I'm not like a super Jenna Ortega fan. Um, I think I've only seen like two movies with her in it. I didn't watch the TV series like the Wednesday and stuff. Uh, I saw it's not triple, not triple X. Um, it's like that that trilogy that's coming out with uh, I forget the name of the movies, <laughs> but but they're actually pretty good movies. But I think you guys want to know what I'm talking about. She's only in one of them, but uh, <laughs> that's neither here or there. Miller's Girl, um, yeah, Jenna Ortega is in it. Martin Freeman is in it. Um, this movie made me feel weird. <laughs> uh, n- not only because of the, the subject matter, but like the way how they kind of like break down. Um, not even masculinity, just like uh, 
your own like confidence in yourself and uh how you deal with your own self esteem uh based on what other people do and what you put out into the world and all of this is from just uh this girl who obsesses over a writer who is actually becoming a teacher now instead so the like the main crux of it is this girl Jenna Ortega's character is um pretty much like kind of like flirting with uh the teacher uh, Martin Freeman's character and uh but like the things that come from that is just like this like exploration and how Martin Freeman's character he just like coming to terms with like being mediocre in a sense and uh Jenna Ortega's character is actually showing him that he's not he doesn't have potential anymore and like he kind of like let it wither away but at the same time like his wife um she's like a very successful person so she's kind of like taking care of him and um she eventually like brings it up that like she's like yeah i married a writer but he doesn't write anymore so, and, and it's just like i don't want to say like i feel bad for him it's just like like he's getting like beaten down <laughs> um but i mean like at the same time he's like just settling for mediocrity and in a sense you could settle um you don't have to oh, i'm sorry that kind of <laughs> We know a little too close there. You don't have to, you know, go crazy with your ambitions. But, like, if that's what he wanted to do, then he could have done that. But he clearly wants to write. So that's the problem. Like, she's like, why aren't you not writing? And you clearly want to do it. And then, like, um, his previous works aren't getting read as much. And that's, like, kind of the main thing on for Jenna Ortega's character. She actually reads his books. So he's obviously getting, like, you know, this inflated ego. Like, oh, she reads my stuff. And, uh, yeah, I'm like talking mostly from his point of view because Jenna Ortega's character is also going through some stuff where like, you know, she wants to get romantically involved with this teacher, but at the same time, she's like a brilliant kid. But, and, uh, she also has another friend who also wants to get romantically involved with another teacher, but she's more like, um, she's kind of like, like acting, I guess, in a sense. Like, you know, the, you know, cause in high school, you're not like really a real person. <laughs> you're, you're, you're the high school person. And if you, when, when you leave high school, I feel like you kind of develop into a different person, like the person who you're going to be for the rest of your life. Cause like you leave that, like that little dome that's kind of protecting you from the rest of the world and you end up turning into something else. So like she was acting like that, like she, she's still like that high school person. Because there's a point in the movie where General Ortega's character kind of, like, puts her against the wall and, like, forces her to actually act on the things that she was saying that she was going to do. And she kind of, like, you know, flakes. And she feels bad about it. And she kind of, like, she's, like, exposing people to, like, the reality of who they are instead of what they're putting out on the front, like, as a shell, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and honestly, like... I'm saying all of this, you might get something else different from this movie, but that's how I felt. But at, at the end of the day, like the movie is kind of like this kind of like little trashy kind of romantic, uh, like skeevy, inappropriate relationship kind of thing. And they do very, it feels like exploitative. Like, you know, there's a, there's a few scenes of it. Like I'm sure they're floating around on Twitter right now. Like, Especially when this movie comes out for download. Oh my God. The scenes that are going to be put online. Jenna Ortega is putting herself out there like crazy, boy. There's no nudity, but it's just... There's some stuff. There's some stuff, you know? All right. Um, I would recommend it, though. <laughs> just don't watch it with somebody that you could get secondhand embarrassment with. Uh, maybe not your parents either, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, all right. And, and the last movie zone of interest, 
uh, Zone of Interest. I had no idea what this movie was about. Again, I, 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 like I said before, I don't like really watching trailers. Um, sometimes it's like inevitable, like you see trailers. Um, so I mostly just saw the poster. This is like the poster that was on the Regal app. Again, shout out to Regal. I love me some Regal. <laughs> It's the easiest way for me to watch movies with that really good subscription plan. But, uh, yeah, so I went into this blind. I sit down, and you're introduced to just this black screen with, like, ominous noise in the background. And you're sitting there for, like, five minutes, just a black screen. I was like, what? What? You The movie's only an hour and 46 minutes. You don't have five minutes to just kill on a black screen right but like the ominous noise is like like if you pay attention to it you kind of like realize that like they want you to listen in this movie so i feel like it's like telling you without saying it's like for the rest of this movie you need to be listening to what's going on in this movie okay we're not just doing this for nothing hopefully (laughs) that's my interpretation of it because now get the plot it's you're following this german family who like the the father of the family he is like a like a manager of auschwitz the you know the the camp uh so it's a it's a not a nice subject matter and this family, they literally live next door to Auschwitz. And if you don't know about Auschwitz, that's where some really bad stuff happened during World War II, where the Nazis, you know, experimented on and killed many Jewish people. Uh, many, 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 many. Um, and you're, so normally when you watch a movie about like Auschwitz or um, Nazis, they are antagonists. They're bad guys. Um freaking x-men that, that, that like i forget which one it was but it literally starts with that and like you know they're trying to you know kill nazis pretty much which everybody's like yeah 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 do it but zone of interest the protagonists are the nazis and there are really no bad guys in the movie it's just circumstances that happen to this family so it's basically just like they're following this family who lives next door to auschwitz who works there, um, go through like regular human stuff. Like, um, the main character, he gets like a promotion. He has to like figure out how to make work more efficient, quote unquote efficient. And like, you clearly, like you clearly see like some of the projects he's working on. I'll come back to that in a second. And then, uh, there's a part in the movie where for his promotion, he has to move somewhere else. But the family wants to stay. So that's like an actual like um, problem, like the conflict in the movie and how they have to figure out how to, you know, keep the family as a together unit without, you know, ruining their life. But at the end of the day, like they're doing horrible things <laughs> and they're making it feel so normal. So like the interesting part of the movie is that it's just like you see them doing this stuff. But at the same time, if you listen and pay attention to what's going on, you will hear like the horrors. Like anytime there's like any like dead space where the, you just see like, you know, somebody swimming in a pool or something, you will hear people screaming in the background. You will hear people getting shot in the background. You will, you'll see smoke because they're burning bodies in the background. Um, it's, it's like a theme, like you will see the cues of something happening during an important moment for the family even though something horrible is happening. And like one of those projects that the uh, father was working on was like this, like way to burn things in a more efficient way where it's like this, like rotating thing where it burns and cools at the same time. So they could like load it up and burn more things, quote unquote. And like, (laughs) like obviously you like kind of know what they're doing. And, um, He's like, yeah, yeah, you're doing a good job. Yeah, we're, we're, we're. he's like, I approve, I approve. And you just see them. It's so strange that you're seeing like, this is their life. This is normal life for them. 
And I feel like it's almost like a allegory in a sense on how like every day could be is like it's normal, but if it's not it's not if it's not like happening to you, um your life is just going. Like it's a normal thing. And it's like out of sight, out of mind. Like they tastefully don't show like any Anybody getting shot, anybody getting burned, anybody getting tortured, nothing. They don't show any, like, horrible things. You don't even see the inside of that camp. You don't see the other side of the wall of that camp Um, until, like, the very end where they, it's very interesting. Like, I kind of still don't really understand it where they, uh, towards the ending, the character, the main character, he's actually getting to go back home. And he starts, like, feeling physically ill. Um, I guess, like, the, the stress of doing evil shit, like, is actually really building up. Even, like, because the, the whole movie is portraying him as a normal person. So, he's, like, not literally evil, you would hope. So, like, he does have, like, some kind of conscience, I guess. And he feels sick. And he, like, looks down his black hallway. And it's like he's looking into the future. And then they show modern day Auschwitz where um, it's a museum now. And it's like, it's a museum for the horrors of the stuff that happened. And you see like people cleaning the museum. You actually get to see the inside of Auschwitz now. Uh, But it's not like, you know, during the actual time period that was happening, because it would be awful. Like, you know, you'll see the people suffering. Um, But now you're just seeing it as like an exhibit. And the things that are remembered are the people who are lost there, not the actual Nazis. So I guess like the character was seeing that he's not on the right side of history in a sense. But um, I don't know if that's like the main purpose of the story. But I just feel like it's, it's explaining how like out of sight, out of mind will make you feel normal. Um, It's like right now the, the whole freaking uh, Gaza and Ukrainian war stuff. That's like overseas, obviously. And that's not like the only horrible thing that's happening. There's so many horrible things happening right at your front door. But if it's not happening to you, it's a, you're normal. Even if you're um, partaking in the, the uh, horrendous acts, if you're not seeing it, um, it's normal for you. Because obviously the father is going into actual Auschwitz and seeing awful stuff happen. But his family, uh, they're at home having like a regular family life. And another another interesting point is like you'll see the family get gifts, like a nice coat, um, some candies, some like shoes and stuff. And you realize like, oh, they're taking that from the Jewish people. They're obviously stealing it when they process them and put them into the camp. And like, that's like another horrible thing. It's like, we don't really care about where we get our um, resources and how it was made or manufactured. We just receive it. Like, you know, the, oh, this airplane. Sorry about that. Um, You will see that, like, you know, the common thing that people say is, oh, your iPhone was made by, uh, you know, these poor people in China and they get paid like 10 cents to make the phones and stuff. Same thing with sneakers and clothing. And that's why people are trying to, you know, make more things uh, American made. Well, at least in America. Um, but I, I don't know. That's that's what I'm getting from this movie. I don't know if that's the main purpose, you know. Uh, it just. I, I, I'll be interested to see, like, what other people pull from this movie. Uh, I'll start looking up um, YouTube videos about this. Usually I don't like to watch YouTube videos about this stuff and let, because if I'm going to share it, I don't want my opinion to be skewed in a sense. So I, I don't want to be par- parroting, you know, what you can already watch online. So you're just getting my raw opinion on that. And I'll start looking into it now, you know, see if there's any like Easter eggs or any, uh, what's it called? Uh, documentary or, Notes from the director himself, or themself. Yeah, the director is uh, Jonathan Glazer. Oh, (laughs) 
I saw another movie from this person, Jonathan Glazer, called uh, Under the Skin. That was in 2013. Um, that was a, what's her name? A Scarlett Johansson movie. It's a very strange movie. I guess <laughs> this that's a running theme with this director. It's just odd stuff that just happens and there's no real like conclusion. Oh man. I'm just getting really trippy too. I, I recommend that. It's so weird. Again, but don't watch that with, you know, family or somebody you can get secondhand embarrassment from. Yeah, it's just <laughs> that one's not too family friendly. Zone of interest is technically family friendly, but uh it is a it's a harsh subject. Um it's a very interesting way to talk about that subject matter, which I think is what they're kind of talking about. Um, and it's very clever to do it the way how they did without, you know, showing the actual incidents. In, in a sense, it's kind of like Oppenheimer, where how they spend the whole movie talking about the atomic bomb and they actually drop it and you don't see Japan at all. You never see Japan in that movie, if I remember correctly. Like, you don't see the bomb drop, obviously. Because it'll be like, you know, distasteful to show that. Um, you don't need to see that to get the story going. You know, get the point across. Um, yeah. All right. I, I would recommend Zone of Interest. All right. So that's all the movies for January. Um, I already start, started watching some movies for February. Uh, I saw Argyle. And I I think that's really it. Did I watch anything else other than Argyle? Um, as far as like movies I'm looking forward to, there's not, not really much in February. I know Dune Two comes out like March first, so I I think that that technically is February because I, I believe March first is a Friday. Yep, it is. Um, so technically if you're gung ho, uh, you could watch Dune 2 on February 29th. Usually the uh, movies release like two or three showings the night before, not just a midnight release. You could watch it like as early as six o'clock sometimes. Um, oh yeah, it's a leap year this year. So February is longer. Uh, as far as that, I'm not looking forward to watching Madam Web, <laughs> uh, but I'm definitely going to watch it because I, <sighs> It's just going to be terrible. I know I shouldn't watch it, but, you know, I got to watch everything, man. Um, also, weirdly enough, I am going to Japan uh, for like a week and change <laughs> this month. So I might not have as many movies to watch. I'll try to watch as much as I can before and after. Uh, I'll probably have consumed Dune at at the time of the next recording, most likely. Um, I probably will just talk about Dune, honestly. If if I actually see it in February, I'll talk about Dune. How about that? How about that? Uh, yeah, so, January, one month down, 2024. It's a pretty strong start, I would say. It's not too bad, not great. Um, uh, based on what I watch in February, not that great either. But, uh... There are a lot of other movies coming out later this year. Movies that we haven't even seen a trailer for yet. That haven't been announced. Like that, uh, what's it called? Monkey Man, I think it is. Uh, by Dev Patel. Uh, he directed it. And it's produced by Jordan Peele. And I, if I remember correctly, Jordan Peele is the one that actually pushed for it to be a theatrical release. And I'm glad he did do that. Because this movie looks great. Um, very action-packed. The trailer looks amazing. Um, I forget when that's coming out. But, you know. I don't think it's this month, uh, February. Um, other than that, I can't think of anything else that I'm looking for for February specifically. That's just a trailer that I saw. Uh, I guess I, I should start talking about more trailers um, as I see them, even if it's not pertaining to the specific month or the following month. But the problem with that is that usually when I go to the theaters, I account for the time it takes for the trailers to finish when... Uh, a movie actually starts. So if I, I usually don't get to see um, all the trailers and lately they've been saving like the last two trailers 
for the same movies. Like it'll be like Dune or Argyle or Madam Web, regardless of what I'm watching at the time. So it's like, I feel like they show you like the weirder stuff towards the beginning of the trailer section. And then it just default to like, you know, the normal, um, the most popular stuff that you're probably going to watch along with everybody else in the world. Um, but if I see anything else, I'll, I'll let you guys know. Uh, we can discuss it a little bit. But again, yeah, I always recommend to not watch a trailer. Um, if you don't mind spending money on a dud, uh, or you could just, you know, wait and hear what other people are saying about it. Um, my only issue with that is that sometimes you'll miss something because maybe nobody watched it and you might have not seen a trailer. So you got to, you know, make some effort. <laughs> but, you know, not everybody's like adamant about watching movies. Not everybody watches movies by themselves either. Uh, I remember the first time watching a movie by myself. It felt really strange. Just like because, you know, back in the day, you had the the ticket booth. We actually had to go up and be like, one for this, and that's it. And there's, like, no assigned seating, so you got to, like, you know, just sit in the corner by yourself. Now you could just, like, you know, do it digitally. You just scan in. They don't need to know that you're not with anybody or whatever. But, again, it's not, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I know it's initially going to feel weird because you've probably been watching movies with your friends your whole life. But um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And the, the more I've been going, the more I notice other people are by themselves watching movies. Um you know, just don't be the weirdo who, like, comes in his pajamas pants and uh, has a bowl of cereal or something, which I've actually seen before. Uh, <laughs> have an actual movie etiquette. And then, like, you know, at the end of the day, it's almost like you, you'll appreciate the movie more sometimes where you get to just, you know, be with your thoughts. But then, like, there's also the times where, like, a movie's so hype you want to talk to somebody about it. So, yeah, usually I try to jump onto, like, a Discord call or something. And uh, discuss it, or even like sometimes a stranger will be like, "Yo, that was pretty sick, right?" But like, yeah, that was cool, man. But it's not like you know, I'm like, "Hey, you want to get some dinner?" And you'd be like, "All right, you're lonely, bro." <laughs> All right, um, I'm rambling, so that's it for now. Uh, thank you for listening. It's a this should be the normal amount of time I spend on an episode, not the two hour first episode. Um, so yeah, uh, go out there catch the movies uh i hope you enjoyed i hope i could help you out and i look forward to more episodes all right so have a good day good morning good night